Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Wii games on your Android device in 2022. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So before we get too far in today's video, I do want to mention about performance and what to expect with your hardware. The recommended specifications for this is going to be a Snapdragon A35 along with 4GB of RAM and to be on Android 10 or above. And this is where you can expect to get good solid playable frame rates from your device. Anything less than this can give some issues and it can be a hardware related problem rather than a software related issue. For today's video I'm using a Snapdragon 888 along with 12GB of RAM just to have a kind of performance benchmark but you don't need something this powerful to get good frame rates but just to keep these things in mind. So once you're over on your phone the first thing we're going to be doing is opening up our Play Store. Once your Play Store is open we're going to be coming up to the search bar here at the top and we're going to be searching for Dolphin and what we're going to be doing is looking for our Dolphin emulator right here. We're going to simply download and install this. Once it's downloaded and installed we're simply going to be clicking the play button here at the very top. We're going to be confirming to all of the information on screen and then we're going to be brought inside of our emulator and the top left here is where we'll have a list of all of our gamecube games added to our emulator if we have any in the middle here we will have all of our wii games and on the right we will have our file structure searching system where we can search for different files and information so this is our basic ui inside of dolphin of course we're going to be setting up and talking about wii games next but this is how our emulator will look and i'll come back to this a little bit later with some specific settings that we can take a look at a little bit later on so the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is an application that's going to allow us to extract and sort our games so for this we're going to be heading back over to the play store once we're over in our play store we're going to be backing out of here we're again going to be coming to our search bar closing this down and now we're going to be looking for an application called c archiver this is going to be a free application that we're going to be using to extract our games so the first thing we need to do is get this installed and we're going to be opening it up. I will also mention from this point, I'm not going to be sharing any download links to games in this video. For any games, you're going to have to download them yourself or feel free to create a dump or backup of your already existing games. But once you have your games and if you've downloaded them like me, they will most likely come in a .7zip or a .rar format. And that's where we're going to need the archiver. The archiver is going to allow us to extract these games into a .iso format, which is going to be playable on Dolphin. So we can bring our games over there and actually load them up. So if you have your game in .7zip like me right here, we're simply going to be single tapping this. And here we will have two options is extract here or extract dot dot dot. If you'd like to extract it in its current location, we can click extract here. Otherwise, we can click extract dot 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 to select an extract location. So for me, I'm going to be extracting it here. And this process can take anywhere from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on the size of your game, depending on your phone and depending on a couple of other factors. So you simply need to be patient while this is extracting. So once your game is extracted, it should come in a .iso format, as you can see I have right here. And that's exactly what we're looking for. From this point, we're going to be heading back over to Dolphin. And once we're over on Dolphin, we're going to be coming to the Wii section here in the middle. We're going to be clicking the plus option on the bottom right. And here we're going to have to simply locate to where our games are. So from this point, I would recommend creating a full Wii games folder where you can put all of your Wii games. So Dolphin can really easily find any games that are in here. So you can really easily have them all in one place. So for me, I have located to my folder right here. I'm simply going to be clicking use this folder at the bottom. Again, you might have this pop up to allow access. We're going to be clicking allow and then our game should appear here. And as long as your game is set up correctly, it should even have the cover art here, which is really nice. If you have added new games to your folder, but they don't show up here, simply click the refresh button here on the top right. And hopefully it should pick up any new games you might have in your system. So from this point, what we're going to be doing is simply clicking our game and then our game should start to load up. Now from this point with all the default settings I didn't have any issues, you can see all of my controls on screen and you can see just like that everything will work. All of the sound worked fantastic for me and you can see just like that everything will work. Now using the on screen controls for a game like Super Mario Galaxy is definitely difficult and it's not something I'd recommend doing but it does work pretty well. So using the controls on screen is quite nice, simply tilt your phone back and forward to actually activate the cursor on screen. So tilting your phone down will activate your cursor and then you can use your finger to move around and tilting your phone back will then deactivate the cursor and you can see that now touching your screen doesn't do anything which is also quite a nice option and of course these options can all be customized. As you can see the game runs quite well here and overall the performance is quite good. Now to open up your on-screen controls and to change a couple things we can simply click the back button or use your gestures to go back a page and here we get this option here on the left and here we have a couple things we can do. We can pause emulation, take a screenshot, use our settings, configure our overlay controls, refresh remotes, change disk or we can even exit emulation here at the bottom. 
if we can click our controls overlay we can do quite some options here edit the layout toggle controls adjust them relative stick rumble choose controller motion controls touch ir pointer and reset overlay i'm not going to be going over all these in details so you can feel free to experiment with them but it's nice that we have all these here for anything that you want to enable the next thing we're going to be doing is actually exiting emulation i'm going to be going over a couple of other settings in the emulator itself but overall running games and starting them up like this should not be a problem whatsoever so once you're back out on your emulator screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking the cog wheel on the top right, and we're going to be going to our settings. And here we're going to be talking about a couple of settings. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the configuration settings. And here we have a bunch of different things that you can take a look at. We have our general interface audio, and you can feel free to experiment with any of these settings right here. Controller settings, again, that's also quite easy. We can click on our cog wheel on the top right. We're going to be looking for the Wii input settings right here. And here we can see all the possible inputs for our remotes. We have up to four. By default, only the first one is emulated and the rest are disabled, but you can feel free to enable any of these. If we click on the Wiimote one, for an example, we have the option to emulate. We have the option to disable or use a real Wiimote with the dolphin bar required. So this is if you're gonna be connecting a full Wiimote to your actual device. I don't have that in today's video. So instead I'm gonna be sticking with the emulated. And here we can set up an external Bluetooth controller, which is really nice or you can continue to use the on-screen controls if you would like. At the very top here, we can adjust our extension. So here you can set it from none. You can add a nunchuck. You can use a classic controller, a guitar, drums, or turntable. So depending on the type of external controller you're using, in most cases, I would imagine the classic controller is actually going to fit best. So here you can feel free to set up a classic controller. So here you can feel free to set up a classic controller rather than a default Wii mode and nunchuck. But here you can set it up exactly how you want, which is really nice. You simply go through, enable each button one by one and set the bindings exactly how you want. The next thing we're going to be talking about are graphical settings. And here we have a couple things. The first thing we can do is change the video backend, but I would recommend leaving it as OpenGL by default, unless you're having issues, you can feel free to play around with them. You can enable the FPS on screen if you would like. I like having this here, but this is up to you depending on what you want to do. You can edit a couple of other things here. But the last thing I'd recommend taking a look at is the aspect ratio. Here we can set up auto for 16 by nine, force four by three or stretch to window. I would recommend leaving this on auto, but if you would like to experiment and play with the other ones here as well, feel free to do that. But just know it can stretch some of the pixels on screen and give a slightly weird image. The last things we can take a look at here are enhancements, hacks and advance. As mentioned, I didn't actually have any issues, so I'm not gonna be playing around with these. But if you would like to experiment a bit further with the video settings, feel free to take a look at those as well. And that's it, just like that you've set up and you can play Wii games on your Android device. I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly, Joshua Davis and Devante Hunt. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button or any, any video on the channel, it would really help me out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.